Hey guys, welcome back to Gluten-Free Habit. Today I'm going to show you how to make these delicious gluten-free Belgian waffles. I don't know about you, but I love Belgian waffles. I love how they're slightly crispy on the outside, soft and tender on the inside, and delicious with so many different toppings. These waffles are fairly quick to make, so you'll be eating them in no time, and I guarantee you won't even know they're gluten-free. This recipe will make five large square waffles, but if you need more, you can definitely double the recipe. I'll give you directions for that later in the video. I've posted the exact recipe down below in the description box, including measurements by weight, and I encourage you to weigh your flours if you have a scale because that's definitely more accurate. And if you're not using a scale, remember not to scoop your measuring cups into your bag of flour because then you'll wind up with too much. Just spoon it into your measuring cups and then level it off with the back edge of a knife. Okay, here we go with the ingredients list, and as always, make sure they're gluten-free. You'll need some white rice flour, tapioca flour, brown rice flour, cornstarch, baking soda, baking powder, a little salt, granulated sugar, buttermilk, some butter, vanilla, and eggs. And of course you'll also need a waffle iron and whatever toppings you prefer for your waffles. Okay, let's get a few things ready. Melt your butter and pour it into a medium-sized mixing bowl, then just set it aside to cool. Now separate your eggs. We'll be using both the whites and the yolks, and we need to whip up the whites, so please make sure not to get any yolk into the whites, or else they won't whip up into firm peaks. Bring the eggs and buttermilk to room temperature, and now turn on your waffle maker to get it nice and hot. Let's get started mixing up our batter. In a medium-sized mixing bowl, mix together your white rice flour, tapioca starch, brown rice flour, cornstarch, baking soda, baking powder, granulated sugar, and salt. Whisk that all up and set it aside. Assuming that I put my buttermilk and my eggs out ahead of time to bring them to room temperature, I can usually mix this batter up in about 15 minutes. It's really so easy. Now for the wet ingredients. When the butter is all cooled, you can add to it the buttermilk, vanilla, and the egg yolks. Whisk that together and set it aside. Now it's time to beat the egg whites. Now in a small mixing bowl, or even a cereal bowl like I have here, beat the egg whites until stiff peaks are formed. I like to start on low until the eggs are a little bit foamy, and then I turn it up to medium. Beating the egg whites will take about five minutes, and it's well worth it to make these waffles really amazing. The reason we beat the egg whites is that it makes the waffles light and airy, and it gives them the perfect texture. They have a nice gentle crisp on the outside, and they're soft on the inside. After a few minutes of mixing, your eggs will be white and foamy, but still not firm. Just keep on mixing and they will be in another minute. In my family, it's really rare that we have any leftovers, but if you do have any, you can definitely save them and reheat them within a day or two. I wouldn't recommend microwaving them because they might get too soft on the outside. What I like to do is preheat my oven to 300 degrees and put my waffles on a cookie sheet. And then I just loosely place a piece of tin foil over the top and bake them for about 15 minutes. And being able to reheat them is so great when you want waffles as part of a special breakfast, but you just don't have the time to mix things up. Like on Christmas morning, you just pop them in the oven. This is what you're looking for. The egg whites are stiff enough to stand up on their own.
Now mix the wet ingredients into the dry and whisk by hand. My family requests these frequently and it's become such a favorite in our house. As a matter of fact, we're having these tonight because we love having breakfast for dinner. When you're done mixing, your batter will be fairly thick. That's exactly what you want. Add all of the egg whites into your mixture. Using a rubber spatula, gently fold them in. When you're done, it's okay if you still see streaks of egg white in your batter. It just shows that you are folding gently. And folding gently instead of stirring will keep the most air in our batter as possible. This is what makes the waffles nice and light. If you're looking for other breakfast recipes, you may want to check out my buttermilk pancakes video. They're so fluffy and delicious, I'll post the link for it at the end. Okay, let's cook some waffles. Your waffle iron should be nice and hot by now. Set out a plate to put the waffles on, and decide what you want to use to scoop out the batter. You can definitely use a ladle, but I like to use this measuring cup so that each waffle has exactly the right amount of batter. In my waffle iron with the four large square waffles, I use almost half a cup in each of the waffles. This will vary, of course, based on the size and shape of your waffle iron, so just play this one by ear. Now just scoop the batter into the waffle iron and cook them for about five minutes or until they're lightly golden. Preheating your waffle iron is so important to making a great waffle. If it's not fully heated, they won't have that nice crisp on the outside. So even between batches, please make sure that you reheat your waffle iron until you see that ready light. This recipe will make five large square waffles, but if you need more, just double the recipe. The only change you have to make when you double the recipe is just leave out one of the egg yolks. When you take them out, they should be firm, not floppy. If they feel soft, then your waffle iron probably wasn't hot enough or possibly they didn't cook long enough. And now, serve them hot with your favorite toppings. Strawberries, blueberries, syrup, mini chocolate chips, whipped cream, powdered sugar, you name it, it'll be great. And there you go gluten-free buttermilk Belgian waffles. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, do me a favor and press the thumbs up down below. And I love hearing from you, so please feel free to leave me a comment. Say hello, let me know what you think of the recipe, or tell me what recipe you'd like to see on Gluten-Free Habit. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next Gluten-Free Habit recipe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.